Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. The ultimate elbow-friendly rackets in the house today. Stay tuned. All right, coffee sponsor of today is Tyler. Tyler writes, hello from Detroit. Have really been enjoying your content as I've been getting back into tennis. Oh, Tyler, thank you so, so much. I'm glad you're coming back into the game. Um, it's a fun game. A lot of people are getting back again. Thank you for the hazelnut blend. If you want to be my coffee sponsor of the day, Network is buymeacoffee.com forward slash tennis spin. You want to hook up the channel? Super thanks is the way. Link is definitely down below. All right. Thank you guys so, so much for your continued support. Hazelnut blend. All right, guys. So today I got special guests from Pro Kenex. I'm going to talk a little bit about their current line, who it's good for, why it's the ultimate in arm friendliness. Um, yeah, let's see what they got. All right. Pleasure to introduce Dan from Pro Kenex to the show. Dan, thank you for joining me today. That's a pleasure. I'm an admirer. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I'm a admirer your, your product too, so uh, I guess the feeling is mutual. So, so Dan, um, my recollection of Pro Kenix comes from like 30 years ago. Yep. I was at the San Francisco Tennis Club when 10G was introduced. Yeah. Um, Hunter Chambers, kinetic mass, which they call lead granules. Mm -hmm. um, innovative. Elbow friendly, um, I mean, just just kind of like you know hit me in the in, in the face, and I was like, whoa, right. what in the heck is yeah. this legal? Yeah. So let's start there. Is yeah. this legal? It is, and and it was contested originally, uh, and so uh, we uh, uh, the ITF had certain rules that were kind of ambiguous whether this is legal or not. So when we so we met with the ITF, and we talked about. Uh, we had, we had a uh, physicist there, the original inventor, uh, an engineer, and we had him there to discuss uh, the properties of, of Prokenex in terms of any violation that would be in that in that uh, codicil, and approved to them that this doesn't violate uh, technically uh, the, uh, the ITF uh, strictures on uh, movable movable mass inside of a rep racket. And then we went on to talk about the therapeutic uh, uh, benefits. Of, uh, of the kinetic technology. And by the end of that period, uh, the ITF said, oh my gosh, this is accepted. In fact, we're gonna change our rules to make sure it never gets contested ah, again. Right? Here we go. Yeah. All right, so that was 30 years ago. Um, you guys have kind of been sleeping for I don't know how many years now. Mm -hmm. And you've relaunched or resurrected your brand uh, maybe five years ago? Yeah, we actually never totally went away, uh, but we sort of reordered the company. Um, we had a sort of a, a, we had a oh, we had a change in ownership. We we'll talked about that off camera a little bit earlier. And so the strategy uh, it, over over the course of time, the tennis industry has changed from a commercial standpoint. It, it went from a product driven success story to a marketing driven totally, success story. Totally. Right? I see that. We we we've complete. We've had. We basically hit maturity in terms of technological and uh, advancements that influence playability. Some aspect, important aspect of playability, and then so now it, it really became a lot of parity, and the way you break parity is through marketing. Right, right, totally. and, and branding and profile and stuff totally, like that. Totally. Uh, as you know, we're we're you know we see we're a manufacturer. We see everything through a manufacturer's lens, and we try to innovate um, uh, in that in that standpoint. Our competitors are extraordinary juggernauts in marketing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So as we sort of reordered the company in the United States, uh, and it's a bit it's a big country, and uh, it would require an enormous amount of. Uh, uh, investment to make a dent, even a small dent. So it was the plan of the uh, principals uh, of the company to 
fo focus on reinstituting and re uh, solidifying the European platform first. Got it. Because you can make uh, uh, you can make a lot of progress with a small smaller re resource successfully in Europe, Italy, for instance. Uh, but that same resource is just like it goes away; it, it means nothing. Right. So what we did is we sort of allocated all of our resources to that project, and in the United States, we knew we had a, uh, a loyal uh, a franchise of players uh, that had accumulated over time that would never play with anything else. I'm chomping at the bit, buddy. Okay. Let, let's get in here. Right. <laughs> let's, let's, yeah. These are long let's, answers, right? No, I need to see these frames. All right. I actually haven't seen them yet, so all right. talk to me about the line now. All right, so we have, uh, now we have three sort of uh, lines. Uh, we have our main line, which is, uh, it's, it's the Q series. And, 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 and I'll take an old racket concept, which you're, you're familiar with. So in the old days, uh, we, our the rackets had uh, kinetic chambers inside. A hundred of them. Uh, yeah, hundred of them. They, that got refined over time. And, the, uh, and, and we've been refining that concept uh, Internally, we're the only ones that do it, so it depends on us. So we've been refining the concept over over the course of time. We it's not showcased out in a, in a real way, mm -hmm. but we have a, we had a hundred uh, chambers uh, in the original, and then we sort of modified that over time. But there's a uh, hundred chambers on each side of the racket mm -hmm. with uh, independent movable mass. There still is a hundred chambers. I I don't think it's hundred. Okay. Uh, and, and again, I'm not the tech. There's some. There's people far more technical than, than me. So you you got me. Uh, you know, you have the wrong guy if you want. You know, a little total space. expert. Right? Okay. Okay. But I, I can uh, speak to that. So in the uh, in the course of time, what we discovered is uh, that uh, having kinetic chambers at the three and nine position is almost irrelevant because that's a pure shot. Mm -hmm. You do not need uh, any um, sort of uh, external enhancement. So we decided to uncouple the, uh, the, 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 the kinetic chambers and move them in four corners. I see. And then we, and after that we said, well, okay, well, you know, the swing is the radius of a circle. Totally. And the tip is always moving faster than the, uh, uh, the hips. Right. Or the, or the, or the so correct. Right. right. Yes. And this is a timing mechanism. The success of this is a timing mechanism. So what the uh, engineers were able to do was to sort of uh, re-engineer the chambers to release uh, their energy, their stored energy during a swing mm -hmm. in, in a way that's more efficient uh, given the speed of the tip versus the, uh, so, so it was like a, a refinement. I see. And, and, we, and, and, the, and the wonderful benefits of kinetic technology are even enhanced beyond even marginal. I mean, it's significantly better. So it's quad focus. Ergo Q. Got it. And so we have a line of Q rackets. So that means quad, like the chain, meaning like three, four, cha four, four points. Four chambers. Yeah, four points. Four points. That's right. what Q means. Okay. Yeah. I see. So that's the four Q points of kinetic mass. Yeah. Okay. So this is like a 100 square inch, kind of 10.6 ish kind of a racket? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that was, uh, in fact, that was the original racket uh, that was uh, held up in a OEM, our first OEM meeting with the big brand okay. that you know about now. Yep. And they said, "Built this for us. We're getting into tennis rackets, big famous uh, uh, string company." And so we can't do that racket, but we know what you like about that racket, so we'll do something like it. And that ended up being one of the, the, the number one rackets. Got you got a thin, the thin throat. The, the round shaft technology was a patented concept that ProKinetics introduced, mm -hmm. and so. Obviously, it's patented, mm -hmm. and so we you would have to uh, have us build a racket if you wanted to do a round shaft technology yeah, at the time. Grounded, right? Yeah, and that was a way uh, the engineers had to uh, uh, to to uncouple from uh, the the way the bending profile of, of the throat of a racket, which is which is wide and consistent, right. and we wanted to bend a little bit differently. We can't do it with that configuration, right. but we can with a with a round shaft. So in the uh, in the so this is the this is our legacy line. Mm -hmm. This has been these are the rackets that, that uh, made kinetic technology famous and ProKinetics very popular in the marketplace. Yeah. Um, we we had three rackets in the, in the in the line that we refer to as legacy: five G, ten G, fifteen G. That's right. And and uh, yeah, so. Uh, 
So uh, I don't have the 15 here, but it's more of a, it's the tweener version yep. of these two rackets. Right. So um, uh, the most player type racket was is our uh, uh, KI KI five. Let me see that. Yeah. This is a KI five. That's oh, a KI five. Getting on there, buddy. And it is, uh, but it's a it is a new mold. Look at that beam. <coughs> it's thin. It's square. Yep. Oh. So this was. Uh, this has a, a very, very strong legacy market, and but we, yeah, after 20 years, we needed a facelift, and so the engineers went to work and developed an all-new, updated, modern mold design that uh, sort of caught up to the, you know, to, to enhance playability and feel in certain aspects, and also uh, create a, a more efficient uh, platform for the kinetic technology to do its work. So 20% less shock, 43% less vibration, 50% reduction in torsional rotation yep. off-center wow. hits. Ooh. And, yeah. that, and that, that concept works in any racket, our rackets, any rackets, because it's independent of the racket. So the kinetic technology is independent of the racket. Any racket it goes into will produce those results. And this is Seppi's racket? No, the uh, Seppi racket plays with the old box frame oh, style, you let know? Let me see, let me see. That's in the Q line. You, you, you recognize? Oh, yes. Hello. Yes. Look at Seppi's right here. That's a player's right there. Right there. That's right. That has a particular Four plus. Yeah. How many grams in here? Okay. We do a three hundred of the Sunstrong three hundred, and uh, we do a we actually do three. We do a three hundred and a three fifteen in the sixteen by eighteen. Okay. And for Seppi and players like Seppi, we do it in a three twenty five. With an eighteen by twenty, and they want they like boards. So it's five grams of kinetic mass in there. Uh, no, we don't use that uh, uh, analogy anymore. It was effective in the beginning, but the the, uh, the technologies evolved and been refined so many times that 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 is not a relevant factor in the original. Okay, uh, you know that that was fact. So so in the uh, in this Seppi bracket, this is one. Of, this is the player's version in the quad focus or Q line. Mm -hmm. Where we uh, we move the uh, the kinetic technology here and here versus the full uh, vertical uh, plane. I see. So, how much um, kinetic weight is in here then? Or how much of the? It, it's uh, we, we don't even secret? we don't look at no we don't look <laughs> at it this way. We, we sort of build the rat the exact racket that we want that's perfect for the plane. Uh, playing profile that we're trying to get to with all the specs and feels that, that, that we need and then we integrate kinetic technology I see it. so you're not measuring it no I get it okay. you know and then we put the kinetic technology uh, appropriate to uh, get to elicit the highest level of benefit I get you. yeah I get you. okay so let's uh, let's move on with the rest of the line okay um, let's start with here, big mama here. Yeah, so this is our uh, going big to small improvement to player. We've already got the player here. Uh, so this is the uh, Q plus 30. This is popular in a lot of markets because, you know, not everyone has a beautiful swing. And you want uh, the racket needs to do a lot more work in terms of, uh, uh, you know, catapulting the ball forward. That's my racket there. Okay. <laughs> so this is the, uh, the Q plus 30. And it's 119 square inches. It's the most powerful racket. It comes in at 265 grams. Right. Unstrung. Okay. So we, we, this was a, a newer rack. Uh, um, uh, we introduced the uh, Q plus 20 uh, a year ago. It's, so the Qs came along several years ago, and we entered, and we added the Q plus uh, 20 because we, we, we needed that. We thought we needed. We did need a, a 110. But when we introduced the 110, uh, we, we still wanted them to have a, a lower profile versus a wide profile. So it, it, it maintains a lot of control aspects of a of a of a more, closer to a more player racket or tweener racket. So people bring me this 15 um, all the time yep. and have me string it. So that's, in my opinion, is the most popular of it is. this line. Oh, yep. it is. It is. Okay. It, it, it is, and it, it is because it's of, of its subcategory, that tweener. It, it captures players uh, that uh, uh, need more game help, mm -hmm. and also players that are very good with the developed swings that can that can benefit from it too. So it's it's pulling from two different pools of player profile. So ten ounces on a eight points head light, seventy one RA on this. Wow, that's what this. Yep. Uh -huh. Yep. So, what's the head size on this? A uh, one hundred five. That's why I see it so much. Yep. 
it because it's like exactly what you said that four five four zero player yep. that oh, my arms killing me <laughs> and I but I still want to play that's that's kind of this racket that people literally bring into me yep um, and then this one is looks like more of a it's a little bit more of a player right uh, not quite the uh, sort of the traditional box frame mm -hmm. so it's the first uh, move from here to here. Alan, great match as ever. Oh man, thank you so much. Next week, same time, same bat channel. All right, my buddy Hanlon and I have been playing for over 20 years with each other. I'm so glad that I have found my tennis buddy. And we just happened to kinda started playing, right? So the number one problem with tennis is if you don't have a buddy like Hanlon, you don't play tennis. Because I wouldn't have been able to play for 20 years without him. And that's when player court comes in. There's over 27,000 people registered that you can play with. Just check out playercourt.com forward slash tennis spin. There's a tennis buddy waiting for you. All right, so finally, let's go into some black yeah, aces. Th this is a big, this is a big deal for Pro Can X. Um, one of the things we wanted to do was introduce a, an entire line dedicated to a particular player uh, and be very specific about that particular player. The general uh, profile is better players that include box frame players. Yes, uh, but um, you know, traditionally, what manufacturers do is we we uh, isolate a player profile, we build that racket, and, and, and when the marketing people get a hold of it. They want to open the aperture a little bit to track more uh, play players into that pool. Mm -hmm. We actually went the other way. We actually closed the aperture. And so among the players, quote unquote, uh, pool of players, the this is an all quarter I see. style. So it's not it's not the stiff banger, surf and volley. Soft. I mean, Black Ace is an iconic name. Yeah. And they've always been known for flexible rackets. Um, is there kinetic in these? Yes. There is. Yes. Okay. So let's start with the. So so we, we let off with the first black ace. We introduced these these on the uh, 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 on these two on the anniversary the 40th anniversary of the introduction of the black ace. Mm. So we want and, and so yeah you know, so that was the uh, so that was the timing of this introduction of, of the new black ace. Uh, obviously, uh, yeah. So so the. Uh, the playing characteristics, and we did this in two weights of 300 and 315 gram. Got it. Yeah, so these are more flexible frames than, um, um, you know, perhaps down the line we'll add a stiff frame sure. for a different profile. Yep. But these these were the sort of the maiden rackets of our new A Station line. Got a it. Station will get all the premium strings, all the premium bags, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, all the, all the racket tolerances are going to be even finer. So the, this is a special uh, this is a special operation within Pro X that uh, that develops and designs and manufactures rackets with, at that that level. Got it. Now we got a pro version here. Yeah. So the pro version. So we introduced that, and of course the market reaction was, hey, I even want more of a player's racket. Right. So we responded and took the, the concepts of the Black Ace and we, and we created the flat, the Pro, which is a 97 square inch racket. Got it. 305, so I believe. Players Black Ace. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. And then we got the finally the Black Ace 105. So the player stick slightly bigger. Slightly bigger, a little bit more punch. Uh, unbelievably popular. It's popular with uh, Academy kids. Right. Uh, and it's uh, popular with uh, former uh, uh, college tournament players who are now, you know, a little older. A little older. Playing more doubles. More doubles. Or anyone who likes a little bit more room, uh, room for error. The club player. Yeah. Okay. So that is the line yeah. right now. Wow, thank you for bringing them out to me. I'm so excited to try them. I'm glad the whole line now has Kinetic. So whenever you think of Pro Kinetics now, 
you have to think about kinetic because yes, there right. is nothing in the line that doesn't have it anymore. That's right. All right, Dan, thank, thank you. you so much. All righty. Thank you. I appreciate All righty. it. All righty. Guys, thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis.